Okay, I wanna. I got some feedback from you guys that said that you do want this um, New Testament kind of overview. Um, so we've covered the first five Gospels. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Romans is a Gospel. Um, it is Paul's Gospel. It is the Gospel of the Ascended Christ. You know, you don't know what he accomplished, really, from reading Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You have to. You see him die. You see him resurrect. You see him commission the disciples, but to really understand what he did in the heavens, which is where we were justified, uh, where our righteousness comes from, and where we are now positionally seated, you have to follow the ascended Christ's ministry, which uh, continues with Paul. So it's not that we put Paul above Jesus, it's just that we recognize that he... Um, on the one hand, he said it is finished on the cross, but that finish was a was the finishing of his work in the old creation, which prepared him for his work in resurrection in the new creation as the high priest and the life of the church, as the head of the body of Christ. This mysterious organism, okay? So then um, we go on to 1 Corinthians and... 2 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, I guess you could say it is the picture of the normal church, which you would say, no, it's totally deformed and abnormal. But actually, Corinth includes every kind of possible condition and really speaks to most where most Christians are. And here's the deal. They are a group of people that are blessed, uh, that they're justified, they're blessed with, they're enriched with all utterance and every spiritual gift. They've got all kinds of gifts. They're zealous for religious things, but they're totally carnal, which means that they are babes in Christ and they have not grown and they cannot understand spiritual things. And because of that, Paul can only talk to them uh, about the milk and not the meat. And um, because of their carnality, they're in division, they're in strife, there's sexual immorality, there's, uh, you know, um, abuse of the gifts of the Spirit. Legitimate gifts of the Spirit are being used um, to... to strengthen the flesh um, and then because of their lack of discernment and lack of growth in spiritual things they are victims and merchandise for false apostles and false prophets that come through um, boasting of spiritual prowess and lording it over the flock and bringing people a different gospel or a different spirit or um, an, another, he calls it another gospel and another spirit, you know, um, and another Jesus. So they're totally ripe for every wind of doctrine to sweep through. Plus, they don't know how to overcome the flesh. And it's because they cannot understand spiritual truth, which Paul tells them is uh, Christ in him crucified. They can't understand the cross. They know that their sins were forgiven, but that's about it. They really don't understand that God has put an end to the flesh and to the old way of dealing with things through human effort. And that's why they can't overcome anything. They don't know how to reckon themselves dead. They don't know how to identify with Christ. They don't know how to handle the spiritual truths that are revealed in Romans, for example. I mean, they basically have not embraced Romans. <laughs> but Paul, the way he deals with their carnality is very interesting because for every problem they have, he does not... See, he, the way you deal with the world is with the law, okay? Because they're not regenerated. But the way you deal with regenerated children of God is to deal with them by revealing facts related to what 
Christ is accomplished and who they are in Christ. So you see all the way through 1 Corinthians, him dealing with their carnal concepts by bringing them positional truths, facts related to what God has accomplished for them in Christ. And I'll just use a couple examples. When he talks about their division, you know, some say they're of Paul, some say they're of Paul, some say Peter, some say, you know, he says, you know, you're walking as mere men. You've got strife and envy and jealousy because of these divisions because you're following after men. So how does he answer it? Does he rebuke them and say, you terrible people, God's going to throw you in hell because you're damaging the body of Christ? No. He says, do you not know that um, you're one body? And he says, is Christ divided? And as, as the body has many members, uh, and so also is the Christ. So he points them to the fact that they're one body in Christ and that they were crucified in Christ and they were baptized into Christ. And it's Christ who's the content. And then he says, all things are yours, whether Cephas or Paul or Apollos or life or death or things to come. Everything is yours and you are Christ's and Christ is God's. So don't be, don't boast of men and don't be a slave to men. So what he's telling him is, look, you are the, he exalts them to the highest place and tells them you are members of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is Christ himself. He doesn't say as the body has many members, so also is the church. He says, so also is the Christ. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so also is the Christ. And then he tells them that everything is theirs. So there's no reason to be jealous or envious of each other. The fact that they're jealous and envious of each other is simply because they don't see what they have. So the answer is for them to get a spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand spiritual truth and grow in their knowledge of the truth. He never deals in um, with these things as in saying, okay, you're carnal, stop being carnal. You're divisive, stop being divisive. No, he tells them, you're carnal, you need spiritual truth. That's the solution. You are divisive. What you need to do is have a vision. You need truth to come. And you need a vision of what Christ is and who you are in Christ and what is yours. Then you won't be petty and divisive because you'll see that all things are yours. You won't boast in men because you'll see that they're just servants and you are the ones sitting at the table. You are the, in the exalted status. You don't need to fight over these things. So for, the, for Paul, it is entirely a matter of vision. All the way through, you see him revealing these precious truths in the context of, of their depravity. Like when he deals with fornication in 1 Corinthians 6, he says, you know, don't go to a prostitute because you're making the members of Christ the members of a harlot. Don't you know you're a member of Christ? Your body is a member of Christ? And he says, don't you know you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? And he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit? These are some of the most profound spiritual truths that he gives them in response to carnal car carnality. So what they need is when he says, you're going to the prostitute, you're going to, um, you know, you're, you're participating in fornication. The answer isn't just stop doing that. The answer is to give them a vision of what's really true of them in Christ and to show them, look, your body is a member of Christ. So when you go and present yourself to a prostitute, you're literally taking the members of Christ and joining them to a harlot. So in every place where he um, admonishes them and rebukes them sharply, he never, tell, he never puts them at risk of losing their salvation in their mind. And he always points to them, points them to things that are already true of them in Christ. And then when it comes to the matter of gifts, 1 Corinthians is the book that does have a lot about the gifts, but what it shows us is that gifts, spiritual gifts, do not indicate your level of spiritual understanding or your growth in Christ. You can be totally carnal, and yet, he says, you're enriched in every way, in all wisdom and utterance, and you become behind in no gift. 
they're preaching and they're pro they're prophesying in the meetings they're praying in tongues they're laying hands on the sick they're seeing them recover they're seeing heals some of them are having visions and paul had to say look i had a vision too but i was caught up to the third heaven and i can't even tell you what that was about you know you guys are boasting in visions he says i'm not going to boast in that i know a guy who was taken up to heaven whether in the body or out of the body i don't know you know but i won't boast about that guy I'll boast rather of infirmities and weakness and shipwreck and foolishness and uh, all the things that befell me, you know, uh, the thorn in the flesh and all the things that I've gone through in humiliation and weakness for the for Christ. So he t shows them that, look, you, your gifts have caused you to be completely puffed up. You're lording it over each other. You're envying each other. You're striving about your gifts. Your gifts do not make you spiritual. You're still carnal. You're babes in Christ. I can't speak to you about spiritual things. I can only give you milk and barely that. I can't give you meat. I can't speak to you the mystery of Christ, the wisdom that we speak among the mature, the hidden wisdom that God ordained for our glory. I can't even talk to you about that stuff because you're so carnal. <laughs> but the answer for their carnality, again, is vision. What you learn in 1 Corinthians is that a spiritual man is someone who sees a certain body of truth and is immersed in it. The, and that body of truth is what God accomplished in Christ and what is true of me because of what God accomplished in Christ. That's what a spiritual man is. A spiritual man discerns that body of truth and it regulates him. So it's all a matter of vision and revelation in the Christian life. That's what we need. We need to grow in the knowledge of the truth. Not just Bible truth, but the truth concerning Christ himself, his person and his work. That solves all problems. All problems are rooted from lack of vision or lack of being immersed in uh, that kind of vision concerning Christ and his work. So that's 1 Corinthians. Carnal people with gifts who need vision. <laughs> um, 2 Corinthians is deeper. It's about the ministry of the New Testament. And I won't get too deep into it, but it shows Paul as a pattern of what real ministry is. And real ministry is distinguished from just gifts. Gifts are for the ministry. They're tools to help and confirm the ministry. But the ministry is something different. The, or, well, something higher. The ministry is the life of Christ himself carried about in our body. And we are brought into various situations that cause us to be beyond our uh, ourselves. We're pressed down with, and without, you know, we're pressed down, we're squeezed, we're put in situations where we have to turn to the Lord and rely on him. And he comforts us in all those afflictions. And we accumulate a kind of knowledge of Christ through the comforts that God gives us through all these situations he brings us through, which are not for ourselves, but they're to constitute us as ministers of the New Testament. To be able to really describe to people their inheritance and bring them into the knowledge of Christ in a way that is not just superficial doctrinal knowledge but actually experiential and ministers to their deepest part so that christ is literally written on their hearts and they become an epistle of christ takes the new testament ministry which has more glory than uh the mosaic ministry you know the the law giving of the old testament where it was the dead letters there is life being transmitted the life of christ and he says we who live are always being delivered over to death for jesus sake and he says we are always bearing about in our body the dying of the lord jesus so that the life of jesus may be manifested in our mortal body so death works in us but life in you and the ministry of the new testament is a writing of christ in the inward parts of the minister and those who are being ministered to and there's a certain amount of affliction, and it, and it corresponds with what he says in Colossians, where he says, I am making up in my body that which is lacking of the afflictions of Christ for his body's sake, which is the church. 
there's no way to really minister Christ in a way that builds up the body and supplies the life to really where it's deep calling unto deep and Christ himself is being written on the inward parts of people without having gone through some things where you are brought to an end of yourself and having to come into resurrection and your outer man is being consumed and brought into weakness but then the Christ of the power of Christ is tabernacling over you. And this is what the false ministers in uh, that, that merchandised the saints did not understand. They, these are what the enemies of the cross don't understand. You can be justified by faith and still be an enemy of the cross because you're in opposition to God's way of working in the New Testament ministry. You don't see it. You don't believe it. You and you think it's all about your gifts and how spiritual you are and how great you are and how articulate you are and how much you can speak and do miracles and have visions and dreams. When Paul says, no, the New Testament ministry is, pro is produced by weakness. He weakens my natural man. He brings me into all these ridiculous situations so that I have to rely entirely on Christ and then Christ comforts me in that situation and becomes my life. And then when I speak to you, I've got this background of comfort so that I'm able to comfort others with the comfort with which I've been comforted by God. That produces a sympathetic, tender-hearted, compassionate minister of the New Testament who actually ministers in the power of life. It's different than just having gifts. Gifts are good. For the, you know, they all build up the church. It's, we're not diminishing the gifts, but the gifts are not necessarily ministry. Your heart has to be changed. You have to go through something so that you, your natural man can be brought low, you know, so that Christ can be exalted in you. And you need to be comforted. You need to be brought through real problems where you actually receive real comfort and can comfort others with that comfort. Not just superficial, uh, surface-sounding religious platitudes, but actual ministry, <laughs> which is rare. And that's where he says, you know, you have many teachers, but not many fathers. Um, so that's 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians is the deeper ministry of the New Testament in contrast to just the gifts of the Spirit. And they should work together. We need the gifts, but we also need the ministry. And oftentimes we have gifts with carnality and no spiritual understanding and no New Testament ministry. So that's First uh, and Second Corinthians. And then I'm going to handle Galatians, Ephesians, Philosophy, Philippi, and Colossians as one unit in the next one. I guess this will be several parts. All right.